Hey, this is Dagan Rich again from HouseBarons.com. Today we're going to show you how to paint a room and by doing so save a lot of money uh, rather than hiring it out. It's possible that you'll have drywall issues that you want to take care of. We have other videos where we talk about uh, small, medium, and large drywall repairs. Uh, you want to get everything smooth, uh, but if you're just hitting a, a room that has the wrong color on it, um, this, is, this is where we're starting from. Here we have um, existing trim. We have a chair rail on this wall, and we also have our, our wooden trim around here. And our goal is to paint these walls. Uh, we, first, before we get to the walls, we paint the trim, and it overlaps onto the wall, which is fine and dandy. Um, then we start masking it off. Um, you can go about this two ways, but to get a real clean line, we'll, um, you can either cut in, and I like to uh, use an angle brush, uh, or uh, my brother likes to use a real small one-inch brush, but you can do it by hand, which saves a lot of time, um, just simply by, by going in and cutting in very slowly without having, to, without having to put the tape on. But for our purposes for this video, we're just going to do it with masking tape, painter's tape. When we put the tape on, and I'll show you how to do that. So to put the tape on, I'll pull out the length I need. I start in the corner and get that first corner started and then I'll roll this back on the edge of the tape and put this against the wall and then just slide it down and then you just press like that and it's right butted right up against the wall like that and you press you, pr you want to press that edge that's going to be uh, receiving the paint and then tear now that's the start of it and we've already done that around all the, the on all the trim that we want to keep from getting the wall color on it now we've got, already got this painted and then we, we put our uh, masking tape on there. But now what I do is go over this, go over the edge of that masking tape with the color of my trim, which in this case is white. And what that's doing is it's going to help you create a real clean line. And so that's, uh, before I do anything else, I just paint between the wall and that tape. And when we come down here with our color and peel it off, it's going to leave a nice, straight, clean line. Once you have uh, done this and this dries, it'll take about an hour to dry, you're ready to put your wall color on. Uh, there's two parts to that, and that is uh, you're cutting in, you're going to cut in on the corners. Let's say your wall is going to end here. So you can either do the taping thing that I did there into this corner with first paint, um, whatever this color is going to be, if it's a different color from this, then tape, paint over it, or you can just come in here like this with this brush and just do that. And that's going, you know, for whatever your wall color is. If you're slow and patient and a steady hand, it'll create a nice clean line. All right, you're, you're, we're going to pretend like this, this uh, edging color is in and dried. Now you're going to do your wall color. So you just come back here with your wall color and paint inside all the way around uh, just you know, an inch or so onto the, on, from the wall to the tape because your roller won't get in there. And so you come in on the top line and we'll make this our bottom line since this is going to be a different color. Come in here with, with the edge all the way around that and, let, and once all that's cut in, you can start with your roller. The goal is to not overdo it on the paint. You don't want to leave brush marks on the wall. So you do a, a very thin coat when you, when you cut in. And the next part is to get your roller and the rollers come uh, with uh, three, you can get them a three eighths inch snap or half inch. Half inch is more for a rough surface, like maybe brick or something like that. Uh, for walls, three eighths inch nap or less. Uh, it carries just the right amount of paint to not overdo it. And uh, it's probably worth paying for a decent roller as opposed to the bargain basement one. It'll uh, give you a nice consistent look. It's, it's worth the extra two bucks or whatever it might be per roller. Paints, there are, there are five different, generally five different paint types. You have flat, which would be your ceiling color. Um, then it goes, and that's a pretty dull. When it says flat, it's just really dull. There's no sheen to it whatsoever. The next one up is eggshell. Um, generally speaking, there might be a little tiny bit of sheen there, but it's pretty flat. Um, and then the next one up from that is satin that we all we do most of our walls in satin That's uh, it seems like it's the right um, Balance between sheen and which sheen means durability uh, It's shinier, but it's also more durable 
If you have flat walls and say the kids drew on it, you're going to be trying to wipe that off. Uh, say it's pencil, you're going to try to wipe that off. You'll be wiping off the paint with flat. It's just it's just not durable. Um, satin will give you a little more forgiveness. Um, then we do semi gloss on the trim. You could do semi gloss or gloss. Semi gloss is you can see the shine there. There's a little light reflection, um, but it's not like mirror finish. Uh, if you really like that glossy mirror finish, then you'd want to get gloss, high gloss paint. Um, but, so we typically would do uh, all trim and semi-gloss, but gloss is an option, option for you. All right, here's a selection of different brushes, and there's, this is just a tip of the iceberg. When you're painting, you need to have some kind of a, a preference in mind. This is my favorite brush of all kinds, a cut-in brush, angled with a short handle. Uh, Wooster is a, a good brand name, and it... it uh, it, this this brush will make a nice straight line. Um, you can see we're kind of partial to angle brushes. My, my, this is my brother's favorite brush. It's a one inch. Uh, this is a two inch, two inch, three inch angled, three inch straight. And they make them for uh, stains as well as paints and in different bristle types depending on the paint, whether it's latex or oil. Uh, typical wall paint is latex. So uh, all our br brushes have the bristles that uh, are good for that. These on the side here are rollers, you know, either using thin rollers for this guy or uh, fatter rollers for, uh, for um, this kind of a handle. Uh, these are more for finish, furniture. When you want a nice clean coat or if you have a smooth door that needs painting and you want a nice, just very even um, and smooth finish, that's, that's what you use these for. Uh, this, is a, this is a trim roller handle and these are trim rollers. Again, half or three eighth inch snap is the same as this one. You can see how fluffy this one is. This is a half inch snap, and it's made to get in on if you're painting brick, um, where you have a really rough surface and you need the extra paint to get in the crevices. Uh, but this is you want a three eighth inch snap uh, to do walls, and they sell it in the little ones as well as the big ones. So if you want to roller your trim, you can, or if you want to use a brush uh, for your trim, you can. This is typically for walls. If you have a huge area to paint and you want to paint it quick, you can get these way wider than nine inches. I think you can get them up to uh, 16 or 18 inches across, maybe even bigger than that. And then you can get the paint pans according, accordingly. And this is a, your typical roller handle. And we, you can see this one, we've already wrapped this in, in plastic wrap, uh, saran wrap, whatever. Uh, the reason we do this is we're, we just finished a job or just about finished a job in another room. And I'm not done with this yet, so to keep it, uh, say you get the job halfway done and it's just time to go to bed and you want to wait to finish it the next day, rather than having to clean out this whole roller, you can just wrap it in plastic wrap. And it's a quick little trip to keep your, keep your um, roller from drying out. It, it's just good for efficiency and time. I always clean out my brushes after painting just to keep them clean. You could plastic wrap them. But the problem is you don't want paint migrating up and underneath this metal housing that holds the bristles because then I didn't bring, we have a brush that's all gross. That's what, that's what happens if you, if you let the, the paint migrate. So clean those out every single day. Okay, so anyway, what we're using for this room is just a regular roller handle with a 3 8 inch nap and a cut-in brush uh, to do close to the trim. And uh, that's pretty much, these, these two things right here are all you need. Um, but there is an endless variety depending on your own personal tastes. We'll put all our affiliate link uh, to all these below on the, in the description below. And uh, if you want to just order them up on Amazon, uh, they'll send right to your house. Uh, Amazon will give us a little commission for sending you their way. Thanks a lot for using those links. It, it helps us out, keeps the videos coming, and it doesn't cost you a thing. And so it's a good partnership in that way. All right, so let's get painting. Okay, there you can see we've got the cutting in begun. Basically you're just painting a line in between all the tight places with a brush and then that'll allow you to get the roller over that and cover the wide spaces and it's no more complicated than getting a little paint on your brush and then you just come in here like this and get right in that groove and make it usually go up, up up the wall about an inch, inch and a half. Just give me plenty of room to get the roller to overlap it because as you can see it goes on a little bit thin in places and the roller will get that but just that groove right there 
we make sure we get covered by the brush so we end up with a nice clean trim line. The same thing applies to any corner. We cut that in by putting the brush into the seam of the corner and then that will allow you to get your roller over either side because the rollers just can't get right down into the corner obviously. As you can see we taped off the smoke detector and we're just going to paint around it, give us a space between the edge and the, the edge of the smoke detector and the edge of our brush. Nice final look. And we're painting all the way around the smoke detector so that the roller can get close to it without getting any paint on the smoke detector and hurt the way it functions. All right, so we have another trick that we use to kind of speed up cleanup. And that is taking the metal paint pan. Um, you get a lot of use out of one pan just by putting it into a plastic bag. And then we're going to use this as our paint tray. You can, you can buy the plastic paint trays at the uh, Harbor Star store or you can make your own just with a plastic bag. Um, it really speeds the cleanup. Uh, just what I usually do is fold the bottom of the bag underneath the bottom of the tray. Just put a little tape on it and that'll hold it securely and then we're ready to pour the pour the paint in here and it works uh, really well after you're all done with the paint all you have to do is go ahead and un, un, uh, uh, unsecure the bag fold it inside itself and throw it in the trash and you're good to go so it really speeds up cleanup another thing I like to do before we uh, get started painting is uh, to put holes in the top of the lid. So I'm putting holes in the top of the lid here, right in this, this whole area. And what that's gonna do is when I pour the paint, any paint that gets trapped in here will drip back into the can. So there you can see, get the holes in the can, and then when I pour it, after, water, after paint gets inside that lip, it'll just drip back in. All right, so all we need to do now is Pour the paint into the tray, and we're ready to paint. All right, so we've got the room pretty well painted. Uh, we've got, we're gonna add some trim at the top, so that's why it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. And uh, now we're at a place where we wanna take off the tape. Um, now, the, remember, you remember when we did this before, we had painted the, the trim and it overlapped it onto the wall, then laid down the tape, then painted white, same color as the, the trim, and then painted over that. So what we should get is a nice clean line. Um, because this has been on here a couple days, I'm going to go over just real lightly with the uh, uh, box cutter to make sure that I don't, by accident, because there's a, a, um, a connection from this tape to the wall, that we don't peel up the new paint. And there you get a pretty crisp line which is what we were shooting for. All right, and so that, that's, that's basically the lion's share of it. All we gotta do is cut the rest of this tape off. Oh, I wanted to show you one other tip before we go, and that is when you're painting exterior trim, with a window. These windows and this one here is unpainted. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is paint this, we'll prime it, and then we'll paint it. But a problem that happens when you do this is then at the end of the day when you wanna close your windows, even if the paint is um, mostly dry or even dry dry, when you do this, the two, the two newly painted surfaces want to stick together. And to keep that from happening, this is an awesome trick. 
put a little lemon pledge or lemon cleaner, whatever it is, a furniture polish on a rag and then just wipe it down, wipe it on your newly painted but dry surface. And when, when you do that and then close the window at the end of the day, the next day you'd open this and there'd be, it won't stick at all. It's a huge um, way to save a lot of aggravation to have, rather than to have your windows stick together because the paint is just, it's just still new. All right, so there you go. This is uh, a job finally finished. And uh, uh, there's, there's a lot to it, but none of it's terribly complicated. It's just about following the right order. I hope this helps with your painting projects. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, thanks a lot for viewing. See you next time.